I want to welcome you to 1130 Wednesday lunch and Bible study from Doctrine of Studies Bible Church in Birmingham, Alabama. We are currently in a series called 2021 Spiritual Gifts. Uh, each year for our congregation, I do a study. So we've been doing this 47 years. So we have a lot of material on our website, certainly on this subject matter. This year... I'm teaching from uh, parts of 12, 13, and 14 of 1 Corinthians to introduce a subject that Paul introduced to the Corinthians about temporary gifts. He said there are certain, temporary, there are certain gifts that are going to be temporary during the church age. And he identified them as we have he said some of them are going to be done away with and some are going to cease. And so he introduced that in chapter 12, 8 through 10. And then once he had introduced it, then he begins to work off from that in chapter 13, 8, 9, and 10. And he works off from it once again in the 14th chapter, 20, 21, and 22. So I want to review those with you for just a moment. Let's look at chapter 12, verses 8, 9, and 10. For to one is given the word of wisdom, that's a gift, through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge, that's a gift, according to the same Spirit, to another, to another, and that the word another is heteros, another of different kinds of faith, by the same spirit and to another, the gifts of healing by the one spirit and to another, the effects of miracles and to another, a prophecy and to another, the distinguishing of spirits to another. And he, he, that word another there is changed to me. It's heteros means a different kind of just like before to another various kinds of tongues and to another, the interpretation of tongues. So what he did is he listed, he listed um, nine gifts. And he listed them in such a way that they're into three, he grouped them into three groups. Then when he went to chapter 13, 8, 9, and 10, when he comes to gifts, because he's been in a subject on love, if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away with if there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away with. These are gifts. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. So he says there are certain gifts during the church age that would be done away with, and there are certain gifts that would cease. And we call those temporary. They'll be done, some will be done away and some will cease. When he comes to chapter 14, verse 20, 21, and 22, brethren, we do not want you to, do not, brethren, do not be children in your thinking, yet in evil be babes, but in your thinking be mature. In the law it is written, and he, and he, he, he quotes Isaiah 28, 11, and 12, and the reason he calls it law is because it refers to Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus 26, the five cycles of divine discipline on the priest nation of Israel. We know Isaiah is a book of prophecy. It's a, he was a prophet, and he wrote on, in that book. And so he describes it in the law it is written. By men of strange tongues and by lips of strangers, I will speak to this people and even so, they will not listen to me. He's talking about in verse 22. So then tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophecy is for, is not, is, but prophecy is for a sign, not to unbelievers, but to those who believe. He said tongues would cease. And now he gives you, uh, scriptural proof of it. Okay. 
uh, just like he gave you scriptural proof uh, of those partial gifts would be incorporated into the perfect when it com when he comes. Now we find out that tongues will cease when Isaiah 28, 11, and 12 is fulfilled in Israel. And they will occur during the church age because spiritual gifts are for the church age. They're for the church. They're your nomenclature in the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27. You've got to read that. Now, before we begin, let's be reminded that the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people for spiritual living. You can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality is personal sin. How do we get out of carnality and back to the spirituality of the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit? I have to confess my sin. 1 John 1, 9, if, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, that word cleansing is really important. It takes us back to verse 7 in 1 John 1 and takes us to the cross of Jesus Christ. As a believer, I go back to the cross in confession of sin for sanctification, not for salvation and justification. I can't tell you how many in the church don't understand that. And it's so important that you understand that. So when I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me. When I confess homologeo, when I come into an agreement with God on what the Bible calls sin, and I'm aware of it in my life, I confess it, it gets me out of carnality of 1 Corinthians 3 and puts me back into spirituality of Galatians 5, 16 and 17. And that's very important for Bible study, John 14, 15 and 16. Because the, the Holy Spirit's ministry is to teach and recall, for example, the Word of God. Well, let's have a word of prayer and let's get in today's study. This is a two-part series on tongues will cease. A two-part series. Uh, Paul wrote a whole chapter on it, chapter 14, because there were so many problems with it. If you read chapter 14, you will see the problems that they were having in Corinthian church with it. Okay? Let's pray. I give you a moment of silence as a believer priest and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. Confess sin if necessary, mental attitude types, sins of the tongue, overt sins. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful today for these that have come our way by the internet. Pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth out of the word of God. Jesus told us, in John 8, 32, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free. Set us, set us free from cosmic lies. Teach us today about the truth, about Paul said tongues would cease during the church age. And they would cease when Isaiah 28, 11 and 12 would be fulfilled in Israel. Teach us that today, Father, in this week and next week. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, One of the things you have to be mindful of when you study Paul, we, we, we typically study him out of English. As a student of the Word of God, you need to learn Greek because if you're a teacher, you need to understand the Greek because the, it was written in Koine Greek. Now, that's the language of the common person. That's the Greek of the common person. It's not classical Greek. And Paul was a master with it. In fact, he was so good with it that Peter says, when you study under Paul's teaching in 2 Peter 3, 16 through 18, you need to put your thinking cap on. And I'm going to ask you to do that. I'm going to ask you to do that as we look at this passage. Now, if you have a study guide, and you could get one off from our website, I have all this information that I speak to you from. I have it in print. Paul laid out his doc doctrinal argument on certain tongues being done away with and ceasing. In chapter 12, he moved to 13, and then he moved to 14. 
That's really important that, that we understand that because he sets up in the Greek language a wonderful way of looking at that. Now, we, we are in about our fourth or fifth lesson. I mean, we, this is not the first day I've taught on this on Wednesday. And so you need to be current with us because I can't go back and explain all this lesson one and two and three and whatever. In fact, uh, today is lesson five. Lesson five. So today I'm going to look at four things about comparing, the importance of comparing 1 Corinthians 12, 8, 9, and 10 to 13, 8, 9, and 10 to chapter 14 because the subject that he started was some will be done away with and some will cease. And now he carries that subject matter forward. Well, if you'd... You got to study the Bible, dear hearts. You got to study the Bible. You got to study the Bible. You, you've got to read chapter 12 and chapter 13 and chapter 14. You got to read it. I'm teaching from it. You got to read it. I mean, you can read that between Wednesday to Wednesday, chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14, especially 8, 9, and 10, right? Point number one <laughs> we will reveal Paul's teaching. When he compared 1 Corinthians 12, 8, and 10, 8, 9, and 10, to 1 Corinthians 13, 8, 9, and 10. Now, Paul used, in the Greek language, he used what is called the mende, M-E-N, dash, D-E, sequence. It's a way you set up a series of thinking. What Paul did was masterful in 1 Corinthians 12. And we've talked about that, and I'm not going to go back and explain it. But what he did is he broke the, the Mende sequence twice. Where he didn't use day. But he did use heteros in, in, in comparison to alas. Every, one, every gift that's listed, for example, 8 9 in chapter 12. Uh, to one is given the word of wisdom, to another, what we have is alas. Until we get, uh, and that's in verse 8, we have two gifts. We have two gifts. In verse 8, we have two gifts. When he took out the day sequence, all right, he broke the sequence. And he did it twice. So we have section one, section two, and section three. In verse eight, that's section one, we have two gifts. In 910A, section two, we have five gifts. That's what he did is he broke it. And to another faith, that word another in verse nine is heteros. Not alas, that's heteros. And then he lists until he gets down to various, uh, in, to verse 10, until he gets down to various kinds of tongues, he broke the sequence again. He left out the day, broke a sequence, and the word another that's there, or he said, and to another various kinds of tongues, the word another is heteros, it's not alas. See, in the English, it's confusing because he just uses another. But it, in the Greek, it means another of the same kind or a different kind. Heteros means a different kind of. And so he broke it. He broke it at eight. Then he did nine and ten until he got down to tongues. And he broke it again. And so we have five in nine and ten A. We have five gifts. And then when he gets down, he breaks the sequence and, and lists the last two, tongues and interpretation of tongues. So we have three sections. We have, in, in section one, which is verse eight, we have two gifts. Nine and 10a, we have five. Section three is 10, we have two. 
So we have nine gifts. Okay? That's really important. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Paul was a master of the Greek language, especially Koine, which he writes our scriptures out of. So it's really good. Now, what we have, he has listed nine gifts. Two, five, and two. Okay? Now, when we go to chapter 13, Paul does another masterful piece with the Greek language. Look at verse 8. If there are gifts of prophecy, they shall be done away with. Now, the gift of prophecy is in section 2 of chapter 12, 9, and 10. He just pulled it out. There were five gifts. He pulled out prophecy. Out of section 2, he, he pulled prophecy. If there are tongues, they will cease. That comes from the third section. He reached in and took tongues and pulled it out. If there is knowledge... That was in section one. There were two gifts. He pulled it out. So what he did, he pulled one out of each group. Group one and two are called the done away with. And the third section, tongues and interpretation of tongues, is the third section. He pulls it out. These are the cease ones. Well, you do know, my, 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 my. Listen, tongues and interpretation are a set, like prophecy and discerning spirits. These things were laid out in sets. I'll talk about it next week. I'm just... You know, you have to do a little studying on your, on your own. My, my, my. Now, interesting, what he does in chapter 13, he doesn't do it in no order, but what he does is he pulls one out because he's in a discussion. He pulls out prophecy because that's what he's after. He pulls out prophecy out of a, out of a whole group, a section. He does it with three gifts. He pulls out prophecy, he pulls out tongues, and he pulls out knowledge in chapter 13. We know where he got them because we've studied chapter 12. Chapter 13, 8, 9, and 10. Paul says... In, in verse 8, Paul says, If there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away with. Verse 9, we know in part and we prophesy in part. See, those are gifts. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away with. So what you have is that in section 1 and section 2, These are the done away with, and they're going to be done away with. They are partial of the perfect. We talked about this last week. They are partial of the perfect, and the perfect is neuter. It's not masculine. We talked about that in the Greek language. And it refers to the canonization of Scripture. The completed Bible, the completed Bible. There's still the there's still the section of the Bible that's under the new covenant. We have the old covenant and we have the new covenant. Or 
we have the Old Testament and we have the New Testament. Same thing. And we, the church age, the apostolic period of the church age is when the writing of the covenant is go, new covenant is going on and when the formation of the body of Christ, the, the Christian church, is being formed in the world. And Israel is on their way out. God is going to give them 40 years of grace, and then Israel is going to go under the fifth cycle of divine discipline to Rome. Everybody knows this. There's got a whiff, just a whiff of sense about biblical history. We all know this. <laughs> I know, my, 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 you've never heard this. Nobody talks about this. I know, but I can't help it. It's in the Bible. I'm just telling you how Paul wrote it and what he said. By pulling one spiritual gift from each section, those sections would either be done away with or cease. Therefore, all nine of these spiritual gifts that are listed in the 12th chapter are known as temporary during the church age. They will either be done away with or cease. All spiritual gifts, oh boy, you've got to read, you have not read 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27? You've got to do that. The, your, the spiritual gifts make up the body of Christ, the church. It is your gifted ministry in the church. An arm, a leg, an ear, a nose. Come on. This is my fifth lesson with you. Why aren't you studying this? You say, well, I disagree with you. You're not disagreeing with me. You're disagreeing with the word of God. I don't have a dog in this hunt. I just want the truth. Don't you want the truth? I just want the truth. I want the word of God to speak to me and the Holy Spirit tell me what's right and what's wrong. And all I've done is teach you the word of God. I've not done anything. I've just taught you the word of God. Any first year Greek student worth his salt could have done what I just did with you. Worth his salt. Not the fact that he went and hated it. I'm talking about somebody that loved the Greek language when he went through school. Point number three. The Koine Greek, that's what the New Testament is written from. The word for done away, which I've talked about, kata argeo, is a future passive indicative, third person plural. The word done away with. He used it twice. He said certain gifts are going to be done away with. He listed them in sections. He said section one and section two are going to be done away with. He pulled one out and said these are done away with. Chapter 13. My, my, my. If there are gifts of prophecy, he pulled that one out. They'll be done away with. Tongues will cease. If there's knowledge, it'll be done away with. That's section 1 and 2 and section 3. And he said section 1 and 2 out of chapter 12 will be done away with, and section 3 will cease, tongues and interpretation. Now, here's what you really have to understand. This word done away with, kata argeo is a future passive indicative, third person plural, is a transitive verb. It's a transitive verb, which means it requires an object outside the gifts to complete it. All the done away with gifts are going to require something outside of them that they're connected with, but something, they're partial, and it's complete. It's perfect. When the perfect comes, it's not a person, it's not Jesus Christ. Quit that foolishness. It's neuter. It's a thing. And it's a thing that's related to the gifts that are going to be done away with. They're going to be incorporated in the perfect. That is the canon of Scripture. I'm talking about the New Covenant canon. 
a transitive verb. It's a transitive verb. It requires an object to complete it that's outside it. This means that something outside these gifts, done away with gifts, will cause them to be done away with. I wrote down for anybody that wanted to look up and get a Greek book called Dante and Manchi. On page 154, you can find that in Greek grammar. You go, I don't know where you get that. Well, uh, come on. I thought I would give you a page number. If, if you want to study it, fine. Well, I don't have a Greek grammar. Well, then you ought to pay attention to somebody knows it. Don't you think? Wouldn't it be good to do that? I'm just saying. Something outside itself is the perfect in verse 10. But when, see, in verse 9, we know in part and we prophesy in part. That's section 2 and 3. That's section 1 and 2. We know in part, that's a gift, and we prophesy in part, that's a gift. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. The partial will be incorporated by the perfect. During the church age, while the church is still on the earth, because that's the importance of spiritual gifts. Come on now. The perfect will incorporate seven of the gifts lifted by Paul, listed by Paul. And it will be done during the church age. While the church is on earth, these gifts are called partial or part of the perfect. Ekmeros, we've talked about that. For we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when the perfect, which means complete, the part will be completed. Then the gifts are no longer needed. The Bible will replace it. The new, co the new covenant, church age, during the church age, the New Testament will replace those gifts. They will be done away with by the perfect coming and completing the partial. We learned last week that the perfect was the completed canon of Scripture called the Bible, a uh, proof text out of James 1.25 for one. Let me close. This is session one on tongues. You, you couldn't take, take it all, the whole load. <laughs> I'm going to come back next week and talk a little more about this. Paul changed the verb cease, P-A-U-O, dealing with tongues and interpretation, that set of two. He changed the verb cease. It's a future, indirect middle, that's a voice, future is a tense, indirect middle, Indicative. That makes that. Now listen to me. I'm telling you how important this is. Uh, Paul, this is the way Paul wrote this. That makes the word cease an intransitive verb. Intransitive. Something in it, not outside it. Something in the divine structure of tongues when it is fulfilled in the divine plan of God, it will cease during the church age while the, while the church is still in existence. You say to me, where do you get this stuff from, Rod Edema? Well, Dana, page 158 and 59, Greek book, Greek grammar. I just thought I would tell you where I get that stuff because you go, oh, I've never heard this. I know. You know, sit under a teacher of the language. I, I don't know what to tell you. 
when God's divine purpose, the idea of an intransitive verb, when God's divine purpose placed inside the exercise of the spiritual gift of tongues was fulfilled, it would cease. That is the language of Paul, Koine Greek. Paul taught that God's divine purpose was prophesied to us in Isaiah 28, 11, and 12. This is what he wrote in 1 Corinthians 14, 20, 21, and 22. He called it the law. The law was written. He called it the law. Because this idea, this Isaiah 28, 11, and 12, comes from Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26, dealing with the five cycles of divine discipline upon the priest nation of Israel. And when God allowed the fifth to come, a foreign nation would come and take them out. Assyria did it in 722 in fulfillment of that. Babylon did it. In 586, and Rome will do it in 70 AD. And that's something. In 1 Corinthians 14 20, Paul gives us a warning about tongues will cease. He says, Brethren, do not be children in your thinking. Yet in evil be babes, but in your thinking be mature, teleos. And then he explains Isaiah 28, 11, and how tongues were a prophetic, a prophetic sign to the Jew of the coming of a Gentile foreign nation to put the five-fifth cycle of divine discipline on him. How about that? So then, verse 22, tongues are for a sign. Now watch this. Not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.22, a sign. Jews seek signs. Jews need signs. You know that? And listen, tongues were not for the believer. They were for the unbeliever. Prophecy is for a sign, not to unbelievers, but to the believers. That's his whole argument in chapter 14. And he said, listen, when it comes to spiritual gifts and especially those which are going to cease, how you view these and think about these is vitally important. Verse 20, brethren, do not be childish in your thinking. Yet in evil be babes, but in your thinking be mature. What's he talking about? Well, he's talking about gifts. Certain gifts are going to be done away with and certain gifts are going to cease. And he says, you guys are really struggling. We're having a lot of problems with the Corinthian church with tongues because you're mismanaging them. For example, I'll close with this. 1 Corinthians 12 29.30. You with me? 1 Corinthians 12, 29.30. Now, when Paul's going to ask a rhetorical question that in the Greek language has the built-in answer. All do not have gifts of healing, do they? No. Why? 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 27 it takes these gifts to make up the body of Christ. All are not apostles, are they? No. All are not prophets, are they? No. 
All are not teachers, are they? No. All are not workers of miracles, are they? No. All do not have gifts of healing, do they? No. All do not speak with tongues, do they? <laughs> What's the answer? No. What are you doing? There, there is your answer. Should everybody speak in tongues? What did Paul say? No. Did Paul? Yeah. Multi-gifted before they were done away or ceased. All do not interpret, do they? No. <laughs> well, you have the courage to come back this week. We're going to look at why Paul called Isaiah 28, 11, and 12 the law. It's because of Deuteronomy 28 and Leviticus 26. Do well for you to do some homework. And look for the five cycles of divine discipline and pay special attention to the fifth cycle. That's when four Gentiles would come in and take Israel out. That's what Paul's talking about. What would cause them to cease when the purpose of them is fulfilled within them in the divine purpose of God? When it's fulfilled, they will cease. And we actually know when that occurred. We know historically, we can date it. Father, we're so thankful today for these that have come our way to study with us. I pray that the Holy Spirit would minister the truth of 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Cause us to understand that certain gifts were going to be done away with during the church age. While the church was still in existence on earth and some gifts would cease. And Paul listed them and he made it as simple in the language as it could be done that we wouldn't miss it. Encourage our hearts, Father, as we study this in the church age. In Jesus' name, amen.